Hi there. This is a No Man's Sky logic design designed to show a three button combination lock using push buttons and normal logic gates. The design's been stolen, copied from uh, Minecraft, from the Minecraft wiki, in an attempt to see whether we can actually replicate some of the complicated designs that they've. Uh, come up with because there's a lot of um, Minecraft circuits there and if we can make something exactly the same there's um, a whole lot more potential of things that we can already do. There's um, this entire left hand side of the circuit um, can be done in a much simpler way in No Man's Sky so this design is only to replicate an existing Minecraft circuit. Uh, using our gates. It's not designed to be a um, a full working system that I expect anybody to copy. Anyway, so let's just see it work the first time and then I'll explain what happens. So the combination on this lock is 3, 5, 7, so that's the third button. And we will see a light on the right hand side go green in a moment. There we go, that's the first digit decoded correctly. Here's the five. That'll light up the second light for the second digit. There we go. Here's the third. That lights up the third light and does the ball drop. Whee! There we go. Uh, to reset this circuit I just get a code that is wrong, so in this case it's a 4, because 3, 5 and 7 are the only valid codes. And there we go, there's a red light down the far end saying reset, and it slowly goes along and resets the entire circuit. <coughs> so the design that these guys came up with was fairly complex. They started off with 9 push buttons, they went to a whole lot of gates that at the end of the day turn it into what's known as a binary coded decimal. So the wire down the bottom there represents 8, the next wire up represents 4, then a 2 and then a 1. So between those four wires in the corner there that's the output code represented as a binary number. So I go over and push button number 1 You'll see the top one of those light up. If I push number 5, you'll see 1 and 4. <coughs> if I do number 9, you'll see 1 and 8, <coughs> etc. So the next thing we've got are these three walls, and each of these three walls is just trying to figure out whether that binary coded decimal corresponds to the settings on these four wall switches. So the wall, the wall switches go into one side of a comparison circuit. The code from our buttons comes into the other. So this one is programmed for a one, nothing on the twos digit, a four, and a nothing. So that makes a total of one and four, which is five. The switch here is programmed for a one and a two, so this one's got button number 3, it will decode. So literally, the lines from the buttons and the uh, wall switches come into here, and it just does a little comparison to say, does this one equal that one? If it does, it gets an output, and it does that for the 1s, the 2s, the 4s, and the 8s digit. Finally, that gets combined into one output to say this code is correct or not. And that code gets carried along to the next lot of circuits. <coughs> Again, for this wall, this is the, the second uh, digit in the code. There's the output going across to the wall, and finally the, the, uh, the, three, the third digit again going across to the wall. At the far end here, We've then got some pulse delays, which 
more pulse extenders. So the pulse coming out of the button is not long enough to um, to flip some of the latches that we've got further on in the circuit. <coughs> so this one lengthens it from about a half second pulse to a bit over a one second pulse, which makes the um, signal suitable for for the downstream part. So this isn't this wasn't needed in Minecraft, but it is needed in our circuits because of the nature of the delays. <coughs> the other thing we've got is those those one, two, four, and eight signals also come through to a set of OR gates <coughs> that add everything together and if any of the buttons are pressed we'll get a pulse coming through this vertical line here. That then goes through a pulse extender and a small delay. So if I press any button this bottom light will light up with an extended pulse. When I get the first digit correct, the wall will decode it and the top light will light up. When I get the second digit right, that one will light up. And then thirdly, the last digit. So if I get digit right, uh, digit one correct, I'll get the top light and the any button pressed light will go up. So let's just go and see that happening. <coughs> so let me start with a wrong button. So I'm just going to hit a number four and three, two, one, there we go, it's a button has been pushed. If I push button three, the very top line and the bottom line will light up, saying I've got the code right for the first, um, the first digit, and then secondly, there's a button that's been pushed. next little bit of circuit is a system that figures out whether or not an incorrect button has been pressed. So by the time we get round to here, we've got three lines that saying the first digit's been pressed, the second digit's been pressed, or the third code has been pressed. This little circuit just ors all of those together, and it says if any of the codes are right, then the output will be low and there won't be a reset. However, if a button's been pressed and none of the correct digits have been pressed, the light over here will go red. Once it goes red, the output here will be blue, which will trip the reset input on the first of three latches. So at the moment, we see the second the third latch there is in a reset state the second is in a normal state and the first is in a normal state so let me go and just reset that again and we'll just watch that so if I press a 4 that's not one of the codes it'll go through the bottom light will light up none of the top ones have come up therefore we get a red light and it resets the circuit we go, it's just reset the circuit. So the first digit correct comes through the top of those three red lines and comes down into the first RS latch, that's a, a set reset latch. The second code comes into the to the set input on the next latch and the third code comes into this one and then finally the output goes to the ball drop. So let's see that in action again. The third digit, the first digit, number three. We get a correct code, there's no red light. The first RS latch flips. Get the second code right. It'll come now through to the middle button, the middle line. It's a correct code. And the second latch is flipped. When I finally hit the 7, which is the third code, it'll come through and boom, we have a ball drop. 
So there you go. So I'm going to put the links on as to the Minecraft circuit that was used to copy this. Um, in a later video I'll show a slightly simplified version of this that uh, real people can build. Cheers.